one more thing um you mentioned um that you've seen t-cells in the in the in tissues where you usually don't see infection and other things like in the brain and how extraordinary is that that you're seeing um cytotoxic t-cells in neural tissue so there there were some um you know i i I made like a comment because there's a nice figure that shows, you know, they looked at the brain parenchyma and people that died of either influenza or SARS-CoV-2. And they saw that there were T cell infiltrates in the people with SARS-CoV-2, but not, not the people who died of lethal influenza. Okay. That is very unusual. And I was quite worried about that before because, you know, um, it's a super antigenic infection and it's also so close to the brain. And then there's, there's a lot of uh, debate on whether the, the virus is able to actually, you know, enter the cranium and be inside the brain or be inside the nerves or, or in the, uh, infecting the cells that support the nerves. Um, but regardless, when you have a T cell infiltrate going into the brain, um, that is bad because it's going to exert a lot of killing. I mean, those T cells, uh, if they're CD8 T cells too, they're, they're not going to be there to, to be nice. They're going to be stimulated and start killing things. Um, and to see that it doesn't happen at all in flu, you know, well, those comparisons to influenza aren't very valid. There were some pedants, you know, people that were pedantic that said, oh, look, no, actually there's tissue resonant, you know, T cells in the brain. Well, no, we're talking about infiltrating T cells, you know, not tissue resonant T cells that may have already been there. Um, we're actually doing uh, comparisons between influenza and between, uh, in one publication between influenza and between SARS-CoV-2. So it is, it is highly unusual. Um, and it was a nature paper. And then there was a recent paper with all those, um, the autopsy studies that also showed, uh, I think to 70 to 80% of um, infiltrate of cases of deaths had infiltrating T cells. Yeah, I mean, we're not comparing, we're not saying, oh yeah, they just had more tissue resident T cells. No, that's not the comparison. You can look at what the T cells express, you know, on their surface to see if they were tissue resident or not. Um, so that's just a little bit of downplaying that some people were doing. No, it's a highly unusual infection and in all these things that we're seeing, um, you know, the amount of, um, I actually made um, an error in one interview. Someone asked me, oh, like, so let's talk about brain disease in general and heart disease and diabetes. Like, what do you think is caused by viruses versus, you know, not? And I said, well, diabetes and heart disease. Well, that, you know, Western diet is a big problem with that. Um, I didn't know. I don't, I still don't know if they were referring to type one diabetes or, um, you know, just cardiac injury from infection. Absolutely. The type one diabetes that we're seeing, the immune mediated diabetes, that's from, that's from SARS-CoV-2 infection, in my opinion. Okay. Because it's activating the immune system uh, so much and causing a lot of autoimmunity. And it's also messing up the, um, the T cells that are responsible for quelling autoimmunity, uh, the CD4T regulatory cells, those are messed up by SARS-CoV-2. So absolutely when those uh, organs like the, the pancreas get, um, get infiltrated by T cells or have some uh, response to maybe circulating cytokine or um, autoantibodies, those, those cells that are producing insulin are going to start dying. Um, I do believe that SARS-CoV-2 is causing a type 1 diabetes um, and could be causing cardiac injury and, and what have you. You know what's so interesting? That, uh, my colleagues have seen an uptick in Graves' disease as well. In the oh. last while. So that could be the same mechanism, actually, along oh, with absolutely. the kids with um, diabetes as well. Absolutely. So I thought, um, someone asked me, like, okay, well, so what's the diagnosis going to be? What, what's it going to be? Um, and I said, well, I'm seeing, you know, it looks like a global autoimmunity. So I have no idea what clinical syndrome it's going to be. You know, it would just be, uh, you can call it whatever clinical syndrome occurs. I guess Graves' disease is manifesting, uh, type 1 diabetes is manifesting. Um, but when you have so many autoantibodies and you've turned the T cells that are responsible for stopping autoimmunity into, into T cells that cause autoimmunity, um, then you're just going to have, you pick your clinical syndrome, you know, whatever it's going to be. I mean, I know yeah, that. Yeah, Epstein Barr, they're seeing, um, you know, implicated in MS, multiple sclerosis. Uh, so um, I know that some people that, you know, they pass with MS, they found, um, you know, the, the uh, sequences of EBV in the brain. Um, you might want to check on that. I think that's pretty much a recent finding. But, um, but yeah, we have no idea what SARS-CoV-2 is going to do. It, might, it really might do so much.